Hello, Internet. Uh, ben here with another video. I've been wanting to do this for a little bit now. Um, so I'm going to talk about this thing called Play Play Mini. It's a thing I made. I don't know if I have to put a disclaimer for that. I'm going to say mostly good things about it. I'll say some bad things, but mostly good things about this thing called Play Play Mini. Um, it is a framework that operates on top of Monogame, which I don't know if it will mean anything to a lot of people, but it's the open source drop and replacement for XNA, which is a thing that Microsoft had done and dropped, as they occasionally do, uh, geared toward making games for Xbox, but the open source community has since made it this cross-platform um, semi-magical thing. I will also say mostly good things about Monogame, but sometimes bad things. Um, so there are other frameworks out there. Uh, Monogame itself has been becoming, uh, I don't know, giving more... I don't know, frameworky tools. Monogame on its own has historically been very just like bare bones. Let's give you a thing that draws some graphics and it's kind of up to you from there to, to figure out what to do. And they're starting to add more and more things, but it does still have that feel. It doesn't really push you in toward that pit of success that we would hope that um, a good framework does. Something like ASP.NET Core, uh, I don't know, Angular, uh, I don't know, all, all these kinds of things. Um, so this is, uh, it's an opinionated framework, and I kind of talk about what that means. I mentioned Angular specifically because it is more opinionated than things like React or jQuery. <laughs> jQuery is, I think, a very good kind of analogy to Monogame in terms of how structured it is, in that it is not. It's kind of do whatever you want, and, and maybe you'll make good decisions or not. Um, there's a lot that you could read here. Blah, 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 blah. Goes through, there's some documentation. Um, let's not do that. That sounds boring. Oh, before though, actually I, I get into the next part, the pre-next part, games I have made. So, I'm this, I don't really, I'm not, my secret intention is not to advertise this game. It's so old by now, um, 2015, you don't have to buy it. But I just want to say this is something that I made with, um, and you know, my graphic goal, I don't know, skills aside, this is something made with, um, with Play Play Mini to give kind of a sense of the scope of the kind of games. You may have seen that I, I see, um, gosh, can't even talk. You may have seen that I say it's for making smallish games. Um, smallish games with mono game. What does smallish mean? I don't know. You can have a bunch of different scenes and UIs and you can use keyboard and mouse and gamepad and have looping music and all these things. I mean, everything that you can do with mono game, uh, you can do. You can, you can make a good game. Uh, Play Play Mini is really, though, I guess I would say limitations, 2D, not meant for 3D, uh, and also um, it has to load up all the assets up top, which could be good or bad. Um, here's another game I'm making. Um, I'll just, I don't know, screen transitions. Uh, this talks to a database under the hood to save your game state. It's using, I forget, DB, light, whatever. Um, I don't know if the music is coming through. Uh, I can skip. Well, we don't skip. It's already done, basically. So this is another game I've been making. And again, we've got... So these are all scene transitions that are kind of... Or, or as I would say, game state transitions. Um, and you play this game. The computer has some AI. He was very lucky and found some tiles in the beginning. Anyway, whatever. Doesn't matter. The point is you can make games with this thing, right? Uh, let's not worry too much about the documentation. I have also made a NuGet package. It, by the way, available as a NuGet package, Play Play Mini. I've also made a NuGet package to give you some templates so that you don't have to kind of scaffold a project yourself because there's a little bit of boilerplate, as is true with, with all frameworks, um, and we'd rather not do that ourselves. So you would first start with, oops, there it was, um, installing the templates. I already have them, so it's going to say you have already done it. Um, and it gives you these two templates. Before using one of these, I would say make an empty solution. There's probably a better way to handle this. This, by the way, is word by word. Oh, here's some of the AI stuff. Uh, let's make a new empty solution. I'm just going to walk through making a little game. What kind of game should we make? I don't know. You'll move around a thing and collect some stuff. Let's make a game like that. Uh, collect some stuff. That sounds like a good name for the project. And making an empty solution. We'll close this and let's put it over here. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is make... Um, a new project using this template. Uh, so that would be .NET new, and we will use Play Play Mini Skeleton. That'll do. I was making something called Bounty Hunter. Let's not make that. We'll call it Collect Some Stuff. The project name, the same as the solution name. Not terribly uncommon. And I'll have to add this uh, myself. 
You may notice I'm using Writer, not Visual Studio. It super doesn't matter. You can use whatever you want. Um, let's add quite some stuff. And again, I might later make the templates um, kind of create the empty project for you. I kind of like doing just the, I don't know, there's pros and cons to each. I, I kind of like having just the project and it leaves it up to me to decide, you know, the, the structure, but I could facilitate both. I could have both, you know, make just the project or give me a whole solution. Um, I've also thought about making a, you may have noticed this is a skeleton. It's, there's almost nothing in this project, which we'll see in a sec. And I also have one for setting up Sarah Log. Uh, Sierra log? I don't know. Primarily to demonstrate how you would register more services using dependency injection, which we'll get into. Um, but it would be nice, I think, to have, um, you know, make me a new play, play mini dot Tetris clone, and you just get a Tetris clone that I have made or something to kind of show off more of the features up front rather than relying on a video like this to show you, look, I made games. I promise it can do things. Uh, we don't need any of these things anymore, so I'll just close that. Uh, all right, so here's a starting point. When you uh, I don't know if you've worked with ASP.NET Core before, you may be familiar with this kind of builder pattern strategy where you do a builder, you configure it, and then you say, okay, I build it and run. I've kind of smushed build and run together into one. It's, I don't know, I wouldn't call it like a true builder pattern. Don't, and don't worry about that. Um, so you can do all kinds of things. And there's more options here that we're not seeing. Um, use fixed time step, for example, that's an option in a mono game itself that is being exposed in this builder. Um, the main thing you will do is load up a lot of assets. Let's go ahead and make assets for the game. And as you can see in, the, in this, you know, maybe it's a sound effect, maybe it's a sprite sheet. Play Play Mini gives you a notion of sprite sheets. A picture is just a texture 2D, basically. A font is a, is a special kind of sprite sheet. It only does fixed width fonts right now. That's another limitation in, in Play Play Mini that you'll have to deal with. Uh, but it, it can do font type stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and make a little sprite sheet. Um, new sprite, let's do, I don't know, I'll do 64 by 64 and we'll make some tiny graphics. So yeah, my default is to use the Dawnbringer 16 palette. You can do whatever the heck you want. Um, let's make, I'm just gonna do your smiley face and we will content ourselves with such a thing. Uh, that looks good. And I'll put a little face. Um, Oh, let's make it slightly derpy, because that's always good. Oh, there we go. There's a little face, and with the face we'll collect, I don't know, let's do some, like, cherries or something. Um, we'll just make a little face run around the screen and collect cherries, and that's fine. And again, this is a sprite sheet. Uh, apparently, I think these are 16 by 16. I didn't actually super notice. Um, this is probably not going to look super great, but I'm going to try not to worry about it too much. Uh... Yeah, that looks good. <laughs> we can call that a video game. Uh, maybe, should there be any bad things? Let's do, I think I'll probably do the background black. So let's just make a dark gray. We'll do like a bomb or something. Bombs are bad, don't touch bombs. Those are being too small. Sure, um, I don't know. I'm making this up as I go. I didn't plan this. Should have I? I don't know. Do, do, do. Bombs, as we all know, have squiggly um, fuses. That's just science. Um, and then it would probably have a spark at the end, even though it's not going to fuse down. Okay, good enough. Um, let me export this. I don't know where it's going to try and put it. Somewhere silly with AI art. I've been playing with AI art generators. Let's see. I just want to... Oh, it won't go outside the window. I just don't want to show you my directory structure, so I'm just going to go up and... Uh, find, collect some stuff, and we'll put it in there. Collect some stuff. Okay, pull this back. So, content. If you're not familiar with Monogame's content pipeline thing, uh, Play Play Mini does not abstract that away. Uh, I'll just call this sprites. You would probably want to, you know, group your things more better. But let's just call it that. Uh, and I'm not going to use... Well, we'll refer to this later. I'll just throw it off screen. Um, so, how does content builder work. This is mono games thing. It is not part of Play Play Mini and you still need to interact with it. This is how you load in um, all the graphics, sounds. Um, if you want to do pixel shaders, which uh, Play Play Mini does not help you deal with pixel shaders. If you want to do pixel shaders, you have to do that yourself. It does make them, you can still use them. It doesn't like make it harder to use them, uh, but it doesn't have like these explicit methods to kind of help you out with, with pixel shaders. But, but anyway, 
Um, I use those in uh, Mysterious Space for some things, but not, not in a word by word. Uh, but anyway, let's add our sprites and build. Boop. And actually, I don't know that you need to do the build stuff. That's handled for you uh, by the normal MS build kind of process that happens when you when you do uh, the build through your IDE. So you, you don't have to build here, but I did anyway, whatever. Um, and if you are curious, uh, can I edit this over here? No, it just wants to open in another editor. It's a text file, but and you could edit it by hand, but that's nonsense. You should install this MGCV editor tool. And if you go to the uh, mono game website, they have instructions for installing. It's changed how it's installed from version to version. They kind of recently changed it up. So I haven't bothered documenting how it's done, but I probably should. My hope with Play Play Mini is that you could use it without knowing mono game. Um, but that's not totally true. You would need to be familiar with, with tools like this. Um, so anyway, I called this thing sprites. It's not in any particular directory. Um, let's make a new sprite sheet. You first give it um, some unique identifier. Uh, I'm just going to call it sprites. And then you tell it what is the name of the file to load. In this case, it's also sprites. So that's a little confusing. Let's, I don't know, call it something else. I don't know, game objects. Let's call it game objects. Why not? Just to demonstrate that they don't have to be the same. And then we also tell it, because it's a sprite sheet, what is the width and height of each sprite. Uh, here we go. We're getting some little IDE help finally. Uh, you, there's a preloaded option. That would be, um, there's this step at the start of the game where it's loading up all your graphics, and it does most of them in a separate thread. Uh, so that you can show a loading screen while it loads all your assets if you've got a ton of them. In the beginning you wouldn't notice, but as you add more and more sound effects and graphics and all these things, again, one of the limitations of Play Play Mini is it loads them all up front. Uh, that's something I would like to change so that uh, assets can come and go as you switch from game state to game state, scene to scene. Uh, but right now they're all loaded up top, which is my big reason for saying smallish games, but uh, I don't know. Mysterious Space is pretty big. There's a lot in there, so, I mean, you know, it's not as big as, I don't know. It's not a AAA game, obviously, but I'm not expecting people to be making things that huge. You should be using Unity or something if you're making something truly huge. So anyway, if you wanted, though, to preload an image before the loading screen, for example, because you wanted to use it on the loading screen, then you would set this preloaded thing to be true. For the most part, we can leave them false. Here's a sprite sheet. I'm not going to deal with any of the other things right now. We'll just do these sprites, which I'm calling game objects. This name will be important later. This name won't. This is just to tell it how to load. And there's a whole loading process. You, you do have to tell mono game how to load. And it's hiding, again, that all the way and doing the stuff for like, oh, I'm going to load them in a separate thread for so that you can do the loading screen and blah, blah, blah. Things that mono game itself doesn't provide. Um, but anyway, for mono game, it needs to know the name of the file. And then this is the name that we're going to use. Uh, or like when we say, hey, I want you to draw something. What do you want to draw game objects? The reason, by the way, you might say, why even have these two? Well, what if you happen to have an image or a sound effect or something called the same name, right? There's not a, uh, your, your, your files could have the same name because sprites.mp3 for a song and sprites.png, right? I can't, it seems unlikely, but I can't know for sure, right? There's no guarantee that you've named all your files different names. Um, you might think it's odd, too, that you don't specify the PNG extension. That's a mono game thing. Mono game says you don't do that. Some of these things are explained in the Play Play Mini documentation. Uh, but it's, again, like one of those mono game things, too, that you, you would kind of want to know. So anyway, this loads it up as a sprite sheet, not something provided by mono game itself, so that we can say, hey, I want sprite number 012, which would be smiley face cherry bomb. So that's why I'm keeping this open, because I'm going to want to refer to that later. So anyway, this loads up the graphics. I can hit play right now. The game won't do anything that interesting. It won't crash. That's nice. Uh, but we're not going to see anything that interesting. But I'll, I'll show you anyway. Here it is. Collect some stuff. Wonderful. So what is it doing when I hit play? This initial game state, whatever you specify here, is the initial game state where the application is going to first go when it starts playing. And it's just going to do it in a loop. If you use mono game, you would extend this game object uh, and it has update draw, uh, load content, all these things. Game states, when you use Play Play Mini, that game thing, that, that mono game game class is completely hidden from you. Don't mess with it. Uh, and instead, um, Play Play Mini makes up the game state, and it's, or sorry, makes up the game 
thing that mono game defines. I wish they didn't just call it game. That's so generic and it's confusing to say they make a game. It's like, well, but not, you know, not a playable, you know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, but they call it game. So anyway, it implements the game thing and what it, um, Play Play Mini does, and it tracks these different game states. So you define, and these are kind of like scenes in uh, Unity or uh, what's the other one? I can't remember. There's another C Sharp one that I haven't played with much. So the name escapes me. Uh, but these are kind of like your scenes. And here you would say, hey, I want to draw. Uh, I want to, here's some code when we enter or leave this particular scene. One thing that has always bugged me about Unity, maybe someday they'll fix this, is handling singletons. Like if you want to persist data from scene to scene, the default in Unity is that when you load up a new scene, everything is gone. There is no memory of what you have done. In Play Play Mini, we have dependency injection. Maybe you're familiar, maybe not. That I have a little thing that kind of rambles about it in the documentation because I don't want to assume people are familiar with dependency injection and inversion of control frameworks and blah, blah, blah. I hope you don't need to know too much about them within Play Play Mini to use them, but basically it provides you a way to declare these, what people who use dependency injection frameworks would call a service. It lets you define these services, these classes, that will persist across the lifetime of the application or not. You can, you can define, may, define that up front. Maybe you want a service that is every game state has its own copy fresh. Um, or maybe you want one that persists across um, services. Very useful for things, I mean, if you've done anything in Unity and had to make those singletons, you would know the usefulness. The usefulness is I want to keep the game state. And when I move from, you know, the title menu to the world map, you know, to the whatever, I don't want to lose stuff. I guess the title menu, you would lose stuff. But, you know, world map to individual level to a pause screen or something. You don't want to lose your game state as you move around between these, these scenes. So, I don't know. It feels very clunky to me in Unity. I don't want to like talk bad on Unity though because Unity is incredible, <laughs> a fantastic piece of technology uh, that I should really use more. Um, but anyway, that you know, it's got some little little things like that. So uh, let's delete some of these comments, and I will talk about these things. Um, we will we will simplify a little. We won't worry about separating input and update, although I think that is the better way to do things. Um, always update. Always draw, we won't worry about entering and leaving the scene. Oh, and sorry, also, this is the, um, no, sorry, this is the playing state. Sorry, I had startup. So the startup state is very little. Sorry, I'll minimize this. You can mostly leave this alone. If you want to draw a loading screen, you would do it here. But otherwise, it just waits. Every time the update function is called, 60 times a second, about, um, it's just going to ask the little graphic service, have you loaded all your stuff? Are you fully loaded? There is also a sound service for managing the loading of sound assets. And if you were loading other types of assets, you made your own asset loader thing, you might implement a, hey, are you fully loaded? So while that's going on in the thread in the background, you keep checking every frame. Are they all done? Are they all loaded? And if they are, then we move on to the playing state in this case. You might go to a title menu in the future. But this is pretty simple. There's not much to do in the startup, right? You're just showing a splash screen. Maybe you say loading, or maybe you distract people by showing, uh, you know, a game by whatever your name is, you know, you, Unity splash screen, well, you want to use Unity, play, play mini splash screen if you are so kind, whatever, you know, you can distract people while you're loading assets in the background by drawing stuff here. Um, but your game will probably be small enough, it'll load up in like three seconds, so you, you can probably, or, or less. Um, this one is almost instant. Uh, and we can demonstrate that, so let's do something. Let's draw, let's uh, clear the screen, and let's just use color black, or no, let's not use that. Let's use blue so we would actually see it. So the, what we're saying is every every time we wanna draw this thing, which is the always draw method, and I'll get, you may have noticed like active draw, always draw, I'll get into that later. Um, but let's always just clear blue, and then we're on, we're on the playing screen. Oh my goodness, couldn't talk. Let's clear to black. So how long do you think we'll see that blue frame? I'm gonna guess for no amount of time. Oh, also I think it's gonna open on the other monitor. That's unfortunate. Yeah, so you're going to have to take my word for it. It fla I do I was able to see it. It flashed for um, an instant, right? I mean, there's nothing to load. Computers are very fast. Um, but if you had enough assets, it might actually be worth showing something in the startup. Uh, I'll get rid of this for now. Okay, what do we want? Let's, let's make this little guy run around. Let's make this little smiley dude run around. I'm just going to leave this down here to remind us what we're building. Um, there's a lot of ways we could store the data. Let's, let's make a little class. We'll make a little... Uh, I'm going to make it a sealed class called player, and we would have an X, and we would have a Y. Also, when I draw this guy, I want like a, um, 
I have like a Pixel X. Yeah. Oh, GitHub Copilot, you know what to do. Um, so yeah, we'll, rather than having to round these or truncate them down to integers, every time I call a draw method, I'm just gonna have these convenience things here to do that little bit of work for me. But I do wanna keep floats because frames happen very fast, right? 60 frames a second, and you're gonna be moving fractions of a pixel every frame. So I need a float for, pro for purposes of moving around, but I just need integers for purposes of drawing. Um, we could also draw, or let's have, sorry, we'll call this like a, a goodie. Uh, and I'll do the same thing. In fact, I'll just copy paste these in. Uh, maybe you'd want to abstract this out. You almost certainly would, uh, but let's not worry. Or, and let's call this a hazard. Maybe there would be things besides bombs in the future. Um, I would say it would be very tempting to make like, I don't know, an abstract class that represents like an entity and you put your things on here and then you would extend entity. Don't do that. Uh, when you start to have these inheritances, you're like, well, this is a type of entity and you know, a creature, you know, maybe you have moving around things. You're like, well, a monster is a kind of a hazard. It just happens to also move. Oh, but a player also moves. Um, doing this inheritance thing is very inflexible. It seems like a good idea at first, uh, but when you make these deep inheritance trees, you get in trouble. A better way to abstract this out would be to do something like there is a uh, class that's like position, let's say, and then we might have a position. Let's go ahead and do that. This would be a better way to, let's put on here, nullable is uninitialized. I promise you I will do it. Was it required? Yeah, cool. So let's go ahead and do it. Let's, let's go ahead and do it. Let's abstract it out this way. I didn't think I was going to do that, but that's okay. Um, so everything has a position and the position has its properties. And that way, if you now want like some sort of mover logic, you just give it mover logic in here. I don't know. Uh, I'm not gonna do that because these hazards and goodies aren't gonna move and just the player will, and then we'll make them touch these things and respond. Oh, maybe we'll give the player um, some lives. And well, you know what? No, lives are such an outdated, we don't have lives anymore in video games. What am I talking about? But let's keep a score. Uh, you'll get points, um, and maybe when you die, you lose some fraction of your points. I don't know. Or or reduce a combo. Ooh, that's an even better way to do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's do combo or streak. We'll call it. That's a much better method um, that modern games will do. So you're you're maintaining a streak, right? Every time you collect a cherry, the next cherry is going to be worth more and more and more. But if you die, you lose that streak or that multiplier. Uh, that is a much more neat way to reward skilled players and and. Than, than have lives or anything like that. All right, let's do that. Sorry, why are we talking about game design right now? I'm supposed to just be drawing a quick, a quick thing. Um, so let's make the player. And yeah, we would never, okay, we'll make a new player here. So new player, uh, you may recall that we must define the position. We'll say X equals, let's do the graphics width divided by two. We'll place him in the middle, right? Uh, and the IDE is con uh, concerned that we might be losing precision, so let's go ahead and give it the precision it, it craves. Uh, <laughs> and let's make a list of goodies. Why not? Goodies. And we will make a list of hazards called hazards. I bet the, uh, oops, GitHub Copilot can catch on to that. And I don't know how we want goodies. Let's just place a bunch. Look at that. Let's do that. Um, that is a bad place to put it. So let's talk a little about services. You may have noticed that playing, right, which is a game state, just says, hey, I want a graphics manager. What is that? I want a game state manager. What is that? I want a keyboard manager. What is that? These are all things provided by Play Play Mini. Uh, they are services. We can jump to declaration and see what they do. Uh, the graphics manager is responsible for drawing pictures and sprites and fonts. Some of this I might want to refactor at some point. It's a pretty big class. It's, it's doing a lot, um, but that's a topic for another time. The game state manager is used for doing things like jumping into new game states. For example, here, we want to jump into the playing game state once we're, you know, fully loaded all of the assets. Um, why does that say? Oh, it doesn't like that capitalization. Fair enough. Uh, the keyboard manager is responsible for getting keyboard input. Mono game itself has built-in keyboard stuff and mouse uh, as well. Uh, Play Play Mini provides a keyboard manager and a mouse manager that lets you do some extra stuff more easily, like 
uh, I just want to check that any three of these keys are pressed or something, which I'll do shortly. That's that's harder to do with mono game. Again, it provides such like kind of just super rudimentary access to the keyboard and doesn't give you common functions you'd want. Like, was it pressed just now? Is it still being pressed? Was it let go? So the keyboard manager provided by Play Play Mini adds those, those helper functions. Um, and when you build a project with the skeleton, it assumes you're probably going to want the keyboard manager when you're doing uh, your playing game state. Uh, so I just throw it in here. Again, there's also a mouse, and the mouse lets you... Um, some of the functions of the mouse is uh, specifying a graphic to use as the cursor, and as well as w what pixel within that graphic. Like, you know, if we drew a, a mouse here, we, we'd want to say, oh, the hot spot for the pointer is right here or something, right? So it lets you specify all those kinds of things. Something else it lets you do that I added for, when I, for making word by word was you can tell it, hey, disable the mouse cursor, stop showing the mouse cursor if someone starts typing, and then if they move the mouse, just show it again. So there's, there's features like that built into the, the mouse manager and the keyboard manager. So anyway, we're going to use the keyboard manager for sure. Uh, another service we might want, some, some other class, is a random number generator. Uh, this is a little bit cheating because Play Play Mini does this for you. Let's make our own service to demonstrate. So I'm going to say, uh, let's make a folder, and I'll show you what I mean by a service. What is a service? Uh, so we'll make a folder called services. Very common concept in uh, web frameworks, uh, or because I've, DI is so prevalent in that world. Um, so let's call this like a, uh, we could make a goodie factory. Is that interesting? I feel like that could just be static, but for the purposes of uh, of this, we'll make it a good, uh, we'll make it a service, uh, an actual like class. So there is a auto register thing provided by Play Play Mini, and you tell it the lifetime. So if you haven't used DI frameworks, it's explained a little more in the documentation. But a singleton, as I mentioned, I was talking about this before, it it lives for the lifetime of the application. So every time in and, and that's what these are. Every time you ask for a graphics manager, you're not getting a brand new graphics manager. Uh, you're being given the same one every time. And that's what we want to do with this goodie factory. There's no reason to new up a new goodie factory every time you ask for one. It's the same goodie factory. Uh, let's not worry about the fact that this could probably just be a static class. Maybe there's good reasons why it's not. Um, so we're going to make this goodie factory. Uh, and I want it to have... Actually, we don't need this. I just want it to have a... Um, yeah, oh, that's it, that's it, that's what I was doing. Man, I don't know how GitHub Copilot knows these things. Yeah, I want a new random inter number generator, right? Um, because I'm gonna have it randomize this goodie. Ah, create goodie, you're so good at this. Um, so yep, yeah, that's in that game state. It's in a bad place, I should put that in models. Let's not worry about that too much. So we want the position to equal new position, and it has an X, yep, and a Y. Okay, so here's why we would want this to be service. Actually, cool. We are getting into some of the advantages of uh, this because we also are going to want the graphics manager. Graphics manager. Uh, and I will just use IDE to complete because we need to know the graphics's width and height, right? How wide is your screen? Because I want to position my goodie in the very center or, or not in the center, but within some range of the display, right? We don't want to go out to 10,000 pixels to the right or something. That'd be madness. Uh, we want it to be somewhere within the screen. Uh, so we're going to ask for a graphics manager, and this is the power of dependency injection frameworks. Where does this graphics manager come from? How, you know, what's instantiating this goodie factory even? Not you. Don't even worry about it. Um, it isn't Play Play Mini directly. I'm using Autofac under the hood, which is a fairly popular dependency injection framework. I thought about using Microsoft's built-in. I kind of would prefer it just because it's one less third-party dependency, uh, but Autofac actually gives some nice features. Uh, that I probably won't get into in this tutorial, but it, it provides some nice features that the Microsoft one doesn't. And I kind of looked around and asked questions online, and people were like, yo, if you want those features, you don't use Microsoft's. It's a, it's a bare-bones one. You would use Autofact. So, use Autofact. Um, so anyway, let's make a new random number from uh, zero up to the graphics width. That's what we want our X position to be. And the Y will be the same. Uh, zero to graphics height. And that would be a new goodie. We can return in Thursday. Do that. All right. So this is a goodie factory. We've made our own service. Let's use it uh, in the playing thing. I will ask for a goodie factory. 
And again, how does it get nude up? I don't care. This is one of the other advantages. I, there's, there's numerous advantages to um, dependency injection frameworks, right? Because you might say, well, why not just nude up here myself? Why don't I just say new goodie factory? Uh, one reason is that I have to worry about what are its dependencies. Goodie factory needs a graphics manager. Well, okay, you say, let's put in the graphics manager. But what if I add more things to the goodie factory? What if it needs more parameters. I don't know. It needs more things. It starts needing keyboard. What if it needs a mouse thing, but this thing doesn't need a mouse, but this does. Then I have to ask for a mouse even though I'm not going to use it just for this. Using a DI framework, you just remove all those concerns. When you want something, you just ask for it and you get it. And, and now it doesn't matter how many things I add. If I add more services here, no other code needs to be updated. It's great. If you used ASP.NET Core before, this is all like super obvious to you and you're like, Ben, stop talking about this. I already know. Um, but I don't know. Lots of people don't. So I just want to cover all these things. Uh, dependency injection frameworks are great. Uh, and I, there is a little bit of overhead in using one. Uh, you wouldn't do it 60 times a second, right? <laughs> and when you jump into this game state, it's only doing this once. Uh, so I don't know. People Sometimes people get hung up on like, but what's the performance? It's going it, to it, you know, cost more milliseconds. It's like, yeah, but it's milliseconds once every time you change game state, right? Yeah, don't do it, every, don't do it 60 times a second, but we can do it here happily. There's, there's no problem. Um, don't worry about performance until it's actually a problem and it won't be a problem here. So anyway, uh, so yeah, rather than now making up goodies ourselves, we will ask the goodie factory to create a goodie for us. That sounds good. And we might do the same thing for hazards. There is one thing I am a little worried about. Uh, what if it places a goodie and a hazard overlapped or worse, what if it puts a hazard right on the starting position for the player? That would be very bad. Um, we can worry about those problems later. Let's see if we can get away for this demo purpose of not worrying about them. Um, and let me make a little hazard factory. Um, so this will be called hazard factory instead. And we will do much of the same things. I mean, in this case, it is a little silly to be doing this, uh, but I'm doing it for demonstrations purposes. Um, oh, you know, something we might do, uh, public, oh. Sorry, that was called like, yeah, create, create, okay, yeah, create hazard. Something that we might like these to do is have um, a sprite index. Like right now, they'll all be bombs, but what if we wanted, you know what, let's make another hazard. Um, what's another good hazard? What's another, or let's make another goodie. That's easier for me to imagine. Let's make, oh, but you're gold. I don't want to do gold. Um, let's do an orange since we've got a fruit theme going on. Why did I try to freehand a circle? That'll never work. Um, let's have an orange, and we'll give it a little green stem with a, with a leaf. Okay, there's our beautiful orange. Um, here, I'll even add a little bit of a shine on it. Okay, there's our orange. I could, now I just want to get careless, like, oh, I want, like, shading. I don't want to do all that. Okay, let's uh, export. Yes, okay. So, here's what I'm thinking. Um, and actually, let's let's demonstrate a little, just for the... Hell of it. So let's have like, this one has a sprite index, for example, the goodie, but the hazards don't. The hazards will all be bombs. The goodies, though, it could be a cherry or an orange. So in our goodie factory, we will specify that as well. We will have the sprite index, and that will be uh, one of two random numbers. So I'm going to be a little silly. We'll get a next, uh, and if it's divisible by two, then we want, what is it, zero, one? else we want uh, two, three, four, five, right? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, five. Okay, that's a little uh, gross, right? But we're saying if, if, there, if our random number is even, then we're going to use a one, else we're going to use a five to pick which of these two goodies. Probably for goodies, we'd actually like to do like, I don't know, what's the type, right? Like maybe oranges are worth more points than cherries or vice versa, right? So we might actually want like a type and then we figure out the index. I don't know. Whatever for purposes of this not taking 50 hours, let's do our goodies that way. Um, hazards, they don't have such a thing. Uh, all right, let's go back to playing and let's uh, ask for some hazards. So let's get a hazard factory. Hazard factory, yep. I would like that here. And then let's see if, no. Hazards, there we go. And I love <laughs> GitHub Copilot's so good. I had I hadn't uh, subscribed to it at first when it became paid because it was free for a while in this beta, beta, whatever 
phase and I was like, ah, I'm not going to pay for it. But then once I paid for it again, I forgot how much I really do like it. I don't know. This isn't meant to be an ad for <laughs> GitHub Copilot. Um, okay, so we created 10 goodies, 10 hazards. We're not going to worry about the fact that they might be overlapping. That can be a problem for another day. Let's go ahead and draw all these things. What's the difference between active draw and always draw? Uh, you can build up, and I'm not going to, maybe I will, maybe I'll make a pause screen, but um, something else you can't do that I'm aware of with, with Unity, there probably is some way, is have two scenes going on at once, and maybe I want to keep, you know, one scene is kind of in front, and the other scene is in the back and is not doing as many of the things as it would usually do. So one example I always think of is, what if we had a, you know, tile-based RPG, and you have the water animate, um, as well, you know, fires flicker and things, and maybe you want those things to happen, even if you pull up the pause menu, you want most things to stop, right? No character should be moving, bullets aren't flying across the screen, but maybe you still want the, the water to animate and the torches to flicker, right? You keep those going. Um, so that's where you would have something like, hey, here's always update. I'm always going to update those animation steps, but only if this is the active scene would I like move bullets around or characters or whatever. Uh, and same for drawing. Uh, if you were going to have some like UI stuff with focus or something, maybe you'd only do that if this was the active on top um, game state. I'm just going to call them game states down now, not, not scenes, because play play mini calls, calls them game states. All right, so same thing. Maybe some things you only do for active draw uh, versus always. Uh, and and maybe again I'll demonstrate that with a pause menu or something when you press escape. So anyway, always draw. Let's clear the screen black and then let's draw all of the things. And I'm not going to do um, these things always update, uh, but we will do an active update. We'll get keyboard input. If I was going to be better structured, I'd do that in the active input uh, step, which you can you know use by overriding, but you don't have to. Um, and by the way, if you know, if you're wondering what are all the things I can override, here they all are. We can enter, leave, draw, input, update. These are the ones I don't have. And then this is the C sharp built in stuff for any object equals to string, get hash code. You don't need to worry about those for your game states. Um, unless, I don't know, unless you do, and then you would know you do, you'd be doing something special and exciting. Uh, so anyway, let's draw the things. Um, I want to draw first all the goodies, let's say. So, and let's say draw goodies. And let's see what Play Play Mini comes up with. So that's fun. Or sorry, not Play Play Mini. Sorry, what a uh, GitHub Copilot. I'm actually going to call this Draw Goody. Uh, and we would draw the goody. And then let's draw hazards. Yep, that's funny. It wanted to suggest the comment even. Um, yep, draw the hazards. And then I want to draw the player. I think actually if... Two, no, let's draw. We'll always draw the player last. So we can just say draw player. Makes sense. And let's see what... GitHub Copilot wants to do. Yep. So we're going to do this by saying graphics. And this is how these are like the functions provided by the graphics manager, Play Play Mini. There's all sorts of stuff in here. Text, text with word wrap, text with outlines. Um, do you want your sprites stretched or flipped? Uh, Mono game has like one draw function that's crazy overloaded. It's got a, a billion freaking options. And I tried in, in uh, Play Play Mini to split those out more. It's like, because mostly you just want to draw a sprite and maybe you tint it. Um, but then every now and again you want to flip. And if you want to flip it, like try just trying to sort through all the overloads that um, are provided by Mono Game is kind of dizzying. And, and then when you finally find the one you want, it has all these required parameters that you also have to do. And you're like, all I want to do is flip this. I don't want to also rotate and do all these things. So again, I tried to break them up into what I thought felt were kind of common use cases. I just want to flip this thing. I just want to stretch this thing. Um, and then if you want more transformations, you want to like really layer them on like you can do with, with um, Mono Game itself, then I provided these, these other functions. So anyway, mostly all I ever do is say, I'm going to draw a sprite, and that's it. Here you provide the sprite name. Uh, this is where we have to go and wonder what is this thing. Um, we called it Game Objects. This is something else I'd like to maybe fix up with uh, Play Play Mini is that you're typing in a string. And what if you make a typo? It's not going to work. In fact, it's going to crash, which I think is good. It should crash because you want to know that you did something wrong rather than it just not draw anything. That would be more confusing. I'd like to call it out. Um, but it would be better even still if you like declared an enumerated type of your own and said, look, all of my... Uh, sprites are going to use the sprite enum enumeration I have. And, and that way you could never typo, right? Because then it would be a, a compile time error rather than a runtime error. 
always better, if you could choose between a compile time error and a runtime error, you always want uh, a compile time error, right? If you've got that choice. So I would love to, that's something I would like to improve uh, with, this, with this framework, but haven't gotten to. So um, let's draw this at goody pixel x, right? Which is position pixel x, all right? And goody position pixel y. And then we will do the sprite index, which is the sprite index. And actually, so I know that these sprites are um, 16 by 16. Let's decide that the positions for things represent their centers. Uh, that'll be good because if you recall, I did, and there's multiple ways we could solve this, right? Um, I went up to the entire width of the screen. If I didn't want them to bleed off the edge, I would do something like this and say, hey, it's got to be, you know, 16 pixels in. In fact, maybe that is the better way to do it. Um, I'm going to choose to do things as their, as their center. One of the advantages to doing things um, based on their center is most of our graphics are kind of circular. So rather than doing a square collision, we'll say, hey, here's the center, and I just want to know if you're, you know, off by, I don't know, let's say six pixels. And if you're six pixels distance, then we'll say you have collided. And that's really easy to do with the distance formula, right? Square root of difference in x, difference of x squared, difference of y squared. Um, and we'll get a collision that I think will feel a little better than doing a strict rectangle. Um, so I don't know, just I'm making things interesting again. I, I haven't planned this, I'm, I'm just going. So uh, yeah, let's do that. My cat needed food, and so did I, so I took a brief break. But you don't know that, except that I just told you. Why did I do that? Let's get back to this thing. We have drawn goodies. Let us now draw hazards and players. It's seriously been like almost an hour. Uh, <laughs> draw a hazard. It feels really weird for me. It's so weird because you and I experience time so differently, and it's 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 very strange. Okay, zero, one, two. So hazards, we know we've just decided this arbitrarily, but for the purposes of doing things kind of interestingly, I don't know that all the hazards are going to look the same, but sometimes goodies are different. All right, let's finally draw the player, and then let's play this dang thing, and we should be able to see. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll accept the player. Might as well pass it in. And technically, we don't have to because player is. Uh, defined up here, but as much as possible, it's really not working anyway, but <laughs> I like methods to be as close to being pure as possible, right? Like if you're gonna, if you need any information, take it as an input and uh, don't do anything on the side, just return any outputs you have. Having said that, I'm gonna call graphics, right? Which is this thing defined up there. So it's all a little silly. Um, player position, that's all good, but the uh, player sprite, whoops, sorry, is zero. So we don't need this one, we need this zero. I don't know, it's purer than it was before. Maybe someday we'll get there. All right, let's see what this looks like. We should have a bunch of randomly positioned uh, doodles on the screen. Here they are, I wish it would open on the same monitor. All right, we're making progress. We have a little guy, it just so happens that nothing is overlapping, that's good. I think the odds are in our favor, the total area of the screen is you know greater than the objects we're putting on them. Uh, but I'm pressing the arrows right now. Can you hear that? I'm pressing the arrows right now, nothing's happening. So uh, let's make me move uh, this little guy around. And I don't know, you know, I, I don't feel like I'm showing off really everything that Play Play Mini can do. You could have just done this mono game, right? It's just one scene. But I think the advantage for Play Play Mini really comes, no game is gonna have one scene, right? You're at least gonna have a title screen. You're gonna have this loading screen if you wanna, if, if your game is gonna be of any significant size, you don't wanna delay people you know, they run your program and are like, where is it? Program, hello, right? You, you prefer to like show something really quick and then have them wait while it loads, do a little dance on the screen, whatever, right? So we, we have all these benefits that we're really not taking advantage of with, with the program so small. Um, and even these services, as I mentioned, it's like, yeah, they could just be static methods. We don't even need a service for this. Um, like it's nice that we're using the graphics, I guess. Uh, but hopefully you, you begin to imagine like it would be great to have a... Um, you know, what, what is the, or let's say current game, that would be a really good service to have that, again, is, is a singleton, it persists from state to state, no problem, because we define as a singleton, it keeps your score and any other information that you do want persisting from, from uh, game state to game state, but again, we're not really going to demonstrate that with this tiny, this tiny thing. Let's go ahead and get some inputs. So. Uh, I'm going to say that if the keyboard, any, press any key, any key down, pressed any key, is, does it describe that difference? No documentation. That sounds like 
That's negative points for uh, Play Play Mini. Maybe I'll fix that up before this video is out. Uh, there should be some documentation here. So pressed on E key is you pressed, but it wasn't pressed in the previous frame. Uh, any key down is, you know, is it currently, is it currently down? Maybe I should just borrow words from, um, I don't know, the web world is so familiar to me and you have like, you know, down, up, uh, click, I don't know, whatever. You know, there's probably something I could do there, pressed, I don't know. Maybe I already did and I forgot. So anyway, we can um, pass in for any key down a list of keys. So I would like to support WASD, so I'll say if you do keys. I'd also like, I really like using the arrows myself, so I'll say left. And for weirdos like me who really love their numpad, um, I also want to allow you to press numpad 4. Um, this is really influenced by the old DOS days when that was the normal thing to do. Um, hmm, excuse me. What's, what's, what's wrong with me? Um, okay, so we would like to keep some sort of X velocity. Um, what if you're pressing both left and right at the same time? I would like those to cancel each other out rather than one of them winning. Um, if you wanted to get more advanced, you might say whatever is the last thing someone press. If you're holding down left, you move left. But then if you press right and you're holding both down, now you move right because that was the last of the, you know, those conflicting uh, things pressed. I have done that for games before. For this, I'm just going to make them kind of cancel each other out. So we will keep a, um, you know, we'll say like uh, DX and we'll have a DY. So if you press left, then we say minus minus. And then hopefully, yeah, that's the one. Thank you, GitHub Copilot. Again, this is not an ad for GitHub Copilot. It's just so useful. See how I love that it catches on to these things. It's bananas. I don't know why it's not figuring out the why for me, but um, it's figuring out the other part. I can probably convince it somehow by doing it, you know, whatever. But by that time, I just type it myself. Um, yep, that's kind of reasonable. So what I would like to do is actually modify it. This is where you need to be aware that frame rates change a little bit, right? If you've done any kind of game stuff, you, you know this. Uh, but we don't want to just strictly multiply it by... <laughs> There's GitHub Copilot spoiling the answers. We want to do it based on how much time has passed since the last update. And that's what game time uh, from Mono Game gives you. And Play Play Mini exposes it because it'd be mad not to. Uh, and let's do Y. So I don't know that times five is a good value. That's just what Play Play Mini... Or sorry, <laughs> what GitHub Copilot suggested. Uh, let's find out. Um, I kind of think it might be too slow. Let's see. Oh, 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 oh uh, some, ooh, something bad is happening. Um, so that's not super great. Well, let's see what's going on here. These are floats, yep. Yeah. We took the thing, we multiplied it by a number. And milliseconds is a, is an int. Oh, okay, that's the wrong thing. See, we trusted GitHub Copilot, and we shouldn't have. It should be total milliseconds. Um, and we want the whole thing to be a float in the end because that's the precision I arbitrarily decided to keep my x and y positions at. Okay, and I wonder if, um, sorry, just to demonstrate what was going on here, does mono games documentation be better? The current milliseconds component of the time interval. So that's, if we were at one second and how do they divide? You know, that would just be the milliseconds component Total milliseconds is like, okay, but multiply seconds by a thousand, minutes by whatever. Um, that's the value we want. I'm actually kind of surprised that they're not the same. Well, but it was as an integer. I don't know. I don't know what was going on there, but we were certainly using the wrong value. Why that was creating the behavior we saw, I don't know. But I feel pretty good that this is going to be better, if not too slow. Whoop, very fast. So we're moving, but we're moving like super crazy quick. So... I guess that kind of makes sense. Um, let's divide by like, I don't know, 20. Oh, do that after, after the implicit. It's, it's generally good anyway. I don't know, if you're worried about losing precision, I want to multiply first and then do the division rather than the other way around. So anyway, whatever. It's like the tiniest thing that matters in so few cases. I'm just so used to it. All right, so here we go. Um, there is a problem in that we've got this classic issue where if I press both left and up at the same time, I'm actually moving faster uh, and then if I just press left, I'm not going to worry. I mean, you could normalize. How do I really have to do that? I don't want to. Now I've said it, I feel like I have to. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to say, um, so the total distance equals, and we'll take the square root of dx times dx plus dy times dy. And then let's make these be floats. And this is why it can be, I don't know, be a float. Okay. 
Um, this is a float. I don't know why I define that. Okay, and then we say dx divided by equal total distance and dy divided by total distance. I don't know. This is a way that we can normalize our distances. So whatever the total distance is, we divide uh, the values by that. Um, I might be in trouble. Yep, I forgot. So if the total distance isn't zero, uh, we don't want to, because we're dividing by zero here, which it's interesting that that does, doesn't crash, but all right. So now we have, um, even if you're going diagonal, it's going to be uh, an equal speed. Um, if I was using a gamepad to do this, I wouldn't have to worry about that because game pads are already normalizing the values for you. Pretty sure? Ooh, I hope I'm not lying. Let's make it so something happens when we touch these objects. I almost feel like though we're like we're done with Play Play Mini. Right? I've demonstrated Play Play Mini to you. you. You can do all and now we're just doing normal programming stuff. Like there's nothing Play Play Mini special about what we're doing at this point. But I've come this far. Um, I don't have no oh, gosh, excuse me. I don't have anything to display score because I don't have a font. Maybe that would be a good thing to do. You know what? Let's do it. Let's open up uh not web dev that's not the right thing um i'm just going to grab a font that i have from somewhere i'm going to do this off screen because again i don't know private directory structures that probably don't matter well here you go you can see uh lefty cross clone my game word by word is almost a clone of the speaking of old dos games <laughs> and dos things old dos game lets across um so we want the font here is this font and this is just a pixel font um, I was trying to zoom in, and this is the sort of thing that Play Play Mini will very easily let you draw text with. By the way, it doesn't have to be a straight line. It can wrap around kind of like how this does. I could have done A, B, C, D, next line, E, F, G, right? Whatever, but I just happened to make this font be a big old straight line. So let's copy this font, and let's do some more specific stuff. So we want to go now to, what do we call this thing? Collect some stuff? Yeah. Uh, content. Let's drop in the font, and then we need to, again, this is just a mono game thing. We need to add this to our little content pipeline builder doodle. So let's add the font. And I happen to remember, because I've used this exact same font in so many projects, I don't remember when I got slash made it, uh, but it is six pixels wide by eight pixels tall. So let's do a new font meta. Uh, well, let's call it font, and it is called font. I'm just going to go ahead and use the same things now. Um, and again, every character is six characters, sorry, six pixels wide, eight pixels tall. Um, Mysterious Space is using a older, weirder version of Play Play Mini before I had formalized it as well, and it actually supports non-fixed width fonts, and I had to do that because I did a whole inter internationalization thing for... Uh, that game where I wanted Japanese and French and all these things, and now character widths can all be the same. So, uh, but Play Play Mini in its current incarnation does not support that. Um, at some point, I should. That's not backport, forward port. I don't know. I should I should wrap that into Play Play Mini so that we can have the uh, the more advanced font uh, fun. But it's not there right now. You gotta do fixed with fonts. Uh, so let's go ahead and first draw our score in the uh, game state. Playing. Um, I will do that in the always draw, and I'm going to make a little thing called draw UI, and I'll just make that a separate thing. Drawn last because, of course, uh, the last thing drawn is drawn on top. I don't know, maybe I shouldn't say I'm, whoa, are you going to say that? That's not correct. We want to draw text, and we're going to use the font called font, and let's do it like five or four comma four, and then here's the text we want. Um, I'm going to use string interpolation because I like it. All right, and we'll draw that in white text. I don't know why it's so indented. And I should do your streak. Let's show the streak. Okay, so this should draw. Now we're done. We've loaded a font and we can draw some text. The power of Play Play Mini. I don't know. I should probably include that font in uh, one of the skeleton projects. So, oops, I've overlapped them badly. Uh, this should go, I said characters were eight characters tall. Or, sorry, eight pixels, gosh. Uh, let's add a little bit of buffer. Let's just do 10 pixels down. I could also do the um, draw text and use new lines and stuff, but okay. Uh, but we don't pick anything up. So let's make it so we pick things up and that will uh, remove them from the screen and also you know, increase our score and then also increase our streaks so that each one is worth more and more points. So why not? Where is the always update or active update? Yes, not always update. Uh, so let's... Um, 
check for player collisions, I guess. Uh, void, or rather, I guess it'd be private. Private void, check for player collisions. Surprised I'm not getting a suggestion. All right, so we're going to go. This is a great way to do it. Hazard is alive. Interesting. Um, I want to find all the goodies that overlap. And actually, we'll check for the hazards first. So oh, and we, we probably don't want to use... Okay, let's do a couple things. We want some optimizations. One, we don't care unless you've moved. If you didn't move, it's not possible that you're colliding something we didn't know about. Uh, this will allow you to start overlapped with things, and you won't interact with them until you move. That should be fine. In the future, we would like you to not even start overlapped, right? So non-issue. Um, we want to go over all of the things, and I'm going to do this a little uh, old school style. I don't want to use link because I don't want to invoke the link 60 times a second. It probably wouldn't matter in this case. There's so few objects involved, and if you're going to do collisions on a bigger area, you would use like quad trees and stuff. Let's not worry about that now, but let's go ahead and do it a way that's a little faster at least uh, than link. So uh, the thing to do and this is because we know we're going to delete things, and it's a little weird, and look at GitHub Copilot knowing what to do. We want to count backwards, because if you count forwards and you delete an item, you have to remember to repeat that i value, right? So if you're at like i equals 1, and now you say, okay, remove item 1, well, now 2 has become 1, but you're going to increment i and go to 2, and now you've skipped checking 1, um, and which could also be bad if you're then go over the the end? Would that be a problem, actually? I don't know. At the very minimum, you're going to skip objects, which is bad. So the way to get around that is you count backwards. So when you delete things and things shift <laughs> you know, over to fill the gaps, it's OK because you've already looked at all this. Um, so this is a little, a little faster. Um, an even better way, arguably, would be to get a list of all the things that you have removed and then just do one remove step at the end. That's another approach you could do. Link would help do that even faster, but let's go ahead and do that, or do this where we um, count backwards. So this is really good. It's interesting that it says when you collect one goodie, it wants to make another. That's kind of interesting. Maybe I'll leave that in, Copilot suggests. Um, but let's say if um, objects are colliding, and we'll pass the goodie position, and we'll pass the player position, right? So if those two, then I'll define this function. If objects are and actually, I'm kind of curious. Maybe we would like to say if goody position, uh, let's say, uh, let's call it is touching and pass another. Let's make it an extension on our location, right? One location can look at another location, and they can tell us whether or not they're touching. I don't know. I kind of like that. Uh, then we would remove, and we would add another one. And then, oh, and then we do some other things. So we would say player score. Let's say plus equals 10 times the player streak, although um, if you have no streak, we don't want it to be times zero, right? There's a couple ways we could have done this. And then we'll increase your streak by one. We could have done this the other way where we increase the streak and then multiply. I don't know. Something about that feels, I don't know. It's arguable. I don't know. I feel like it's like, no, no, let's get the points and then increase the streak. I don't know. Something about that feels more natural to me. It really doesn't matter. You can arrange these however you want. Um, technically, I'm doing a little more math here. Boo-hoo. It is like this talk about micro optimizations. Um, okay, so that's good. Check for collisions with goodies. I would like to also check uh, for collections with, uh, say, check for collisions with hazards. So let's give uh, some context, and that should help. Whoops. Yeah, so uh, if there's a collision, and we'll do the same thing. Uh, but we'll say hazard. If the hazard position is touching, I'm going to say let's not remove, let's not create a new hazard. Let's not remove the hazard either. Let's put the player back in the in the center. Um, oh, that's interesting. Yep, put them back there. Oh, am I not allowed to for some reason? Oh, it's in it only. Okay, well, that's okay. We can, that's fine. We can do it this way. Maybe that's reasonable. I don't know. I'm not going to worry too much. I was like, man, I want like, records and stuff when I was first making this thing, but I don't know, maybe I don't. Anyway, and then what should happen is that your streak should become zero. So go back to the center. You died. No streak. Now we just need to do this. Ooh, sorry, one more thing. If we encounter any of these, we should be done. And we can just break out of this function, right? If you collided with a hazard, nothing else counts. I don't need to check multiple 
collisions. Maybe I'll leave that comment there, right? I don't need to. I don't care if you touch three things in the same frame. You touched any hazard, we're done. We're not checking goodies. You just checked hazards. That seems reasonable. Let's make an override for position. Um, or not an override, sorry. Dual function. So is touching? Yep. Yeah. Um, that's interesting. So it wants to know if the difference is less than or equal to 16. Because it's the center, that's a very good um, way to do it. I was going to use a circle. Um, so let's uh, say distance equals, and let's see if it can do that for us. Yep, that's one way. And then we'll return distance is less than. So they're eight wide. It's going to, sorry, let me pull up the image. Right, it'd be eight to eight, but there is like white space around a lot of these, and it is usually better, certainly for hazards, um, to give the player some wiggle room. I'm gonna say, this looks like it's seven, this looks like it's six. Let's just say 12. Let's say if it's less than or equal to 12, then you, um, you did it. And I don't know, maybe it's good to have those labeled. As that's distance, or does everyone know distance? I'll just leave it like this. Okay, um, so let's see if that works. We should collect points and do distance stuff. I mean, this is a dumb game. There's hardly a reason. Maybe I should make a pause thing just to demonstrate. So let's collect an orange. Yep, our studio. Oh, and I saw uh, the new ones appear. That's good. And if I touch this, bonk. Yep, I've gone back. My streak is reset. So this is only worth 10. This should be worth 20. This is worth 30. Yep, I'll get two here. Oh no, I've touched a bomb, my streak is reset. All right, this is, uh, generously speaking, a game. <laughs> um, oh, I can probably like go outside, maybe we wanna fix that. Um, let's go ahead and make, I almost wanna make things move a little bit just to show off like background states doing things, but I'm not gonna worry about it. So uh, we have this game, fine. Let's make a pause menu when you press escape and we'll show off like dimming the thing. So let's make a pause menu. This is a new game state. It's a new game state. Um, it barely matters, but I'm choosing to make it sealed because it really should be. I don't know, there's a performance implication, but there's also just communication. To, like, don't extend one of these game states you've made. That would be madness. There is no conceivable reason to do it. Let's seal the class. Sealed should be your default in general, unless you really know otherwise, unless you're building something where you, you know, like, no, this is like a, a framework, an engine, a system you, you, that you uh, extend these classes. But anyway, sealed, sealed by default. Um, and we're going to want the previous state, which we're going to draw underneath the pause menu. Um, so let's do that. So this will be game state, and we'll call this previous state. And we will also want the game state manager. That is uh, our service, right? Which we tend to call GSM. And then we're gonna want graphics manager, of course. Uh, and then we'll want keyboard, oops, I don't need to set it ever. And then we'll need the keyboard manager because I'll just have you press yes or no. It'll just be a, oh, I guess call it keyboard. Um, and I usually just call it graphics. All right, let's put this in a constructor. And I'll get to the previous state later, how that gets set. Um, but let's draw this at least. So we'll call this, so this would be the always draw. And here's what we wanna do. Uh, first, yeah, exactly. Thank you, GitHub Code Highlight. We want to always draw the previous state. Whatever the previous state's always draw is, we're gonna draw it. It's not the active state anymore, so we shouldn't call it active draw in case there was something there, there isn't. But we do wanna do the always draw. And for the uh, update, the always update, we will call the previous state's always update. So if there were animations, you would do any of that. And, you know, in this case, there aren't. So th this, is, this is meaningless for this particular example, but that's fine. What I want to now do on top of this is draw a filled rectangle, graphics width and graphics height, and we're going to make a new color. We're going to make it black, and we'll make it mostly um, opaque, slightly transparent. So this will dim, right? We're going to draw the previous state then dim it on top, and then we will draw some dialog box in the middle. So we'll like draw a filled rectangle. Um, let's make, I don't know, a window width. Let's make it 100 by, uh, I don't know, window height. I don't know, uh, can probably just be 40, that's fine. 
So we're going to draw at graphics width minus window width by the two. We're just going to center this manually, right? We're just drawing rectangles su super stupidly. I do, by the way, have a, um, a extension NuGet package for PlayPlay Play Mini called PlayPlayMini.ui, which adds methods for drawing dialogues um, and some control elements like like multi selects or sorry uh, check boxes radios and um, like select drop downs but I don't actually have them be drop downs for reasons that don't matter I, just, I don't know I just, it was pretty arbitrary um, uh, so let's do that uh, window width is a thing sorry that was a phone call that time that I paused for all right and then we'll draw whoops color dot white so this is our white thing our white, our white uh, window box, I guess, and then inside I'll draw some text uh, that will say like, oh, using the font, and we would want, let's make some things, so we'll say uh, var int, we'll call this one var int, what am I saying? Window x will equal, let's do this, because I'm going to want to make things offset, um, and var window y, do you think GitHub Copilot can figure it out? Of course it can. Uh, window x, window y, and then let's draw this at window x plus 4, window y plus 4, and then we'll draw really quick, new line, press q, or any, uh, press q to quit, or any other key to not quit. <laughs> That's text. That's words you can say. Uh, we'll draw this in black text. So, Press Q to quit, or, and let's put another new line, I guess, and you're a Q to not quit. Um, that's just like how a human would speak. Maybe I'll put two new lines in between. Um, I think, I don't think I have to draw wrapped. Yeah, it's it, word wrapped by default. Um, if there was, you can specify a max width, and it will keep the it within that, which, oh my gosh, isn't that what I should do? I should have a max width? Let me check where that is. Um, speaking of having too many overloads, there is a draw text where you just pass, oh, it is with word wrap. I'm sorry, I lied to you when I said it was uh, with or without. Okay, so this should be window width minus eight, um, right? We want the four pixels padding. Um, and then I don't need new lines here. It'll just new line itself. Uh, let's just demonstrate that to the full by saying, really quick, press key, quit, range of key, not quit. Okay, and then we will do the input thing. Yeah, we're going to worry about that other part later. So override input, active input, and we'll say if the keyboard uh, pressed key keys Q, then we will do full we'll quit. We'll say exit on the game state manager. Uh, else, if you pressed any key, right, then we'll just return to the old state. So we'll say change state to the previous state. So this will kick you back. Uh, but we want to really check for this queue first. And then any other key will, will happen after. So here's our little pause menu. So here's a big question. How do we get the previous state into this pause menu? And this is where one of the features uh, I mentioned of AutoFAC that Microsoft, uh, Microsoft dependency injection thing doesn't have uh, will let us do this. So I'm going to make, and you don't have to do this part, but I'm going to do it because it's, I feel like it's best practice. Uh, we're going to make an object that we, another object, we're going to call this pause menu config. And this would be, what are the extra things we want to pass into this pause menu? We're going to wrap them all up into some sort of config object. In this case, all we want is one. We just want, oops, we just want a game state. Um, and so we don't really need an object to wrap one value, right? But oftentimes you are wrapping or you're passing more things in. So I think you should probably do this. And we're going to ask now for uh, the pause menu config called config, and we will pull the previous state out of that config. So dependency injection. Usually we ask for a service here and we just get it. This isn't a service and it wouldn't make any sense to be because how do you figure out the, the previous state, right? This is a data object and you could imagine maybe, you know, we pass in the title, maybe make a, gen a generic yes, no dialogue. Um, that's interesting. And you want to put in like extra things for your yes, no, and right, you would, dependency injection is not going to know how to fill all these things in. It's whoever's calling the, this game state is like, hey, I'm asking for the yes, no dialogue. Here's the title in the body that I want to display or something, right? Um, so we're not going to provide 
this pause menu config do dependency injection. Uh, we are going to do instead, and let's make the input for this. We will say if keyboard key down uh, keys escape. We're going to change the game state, and we're going to go to the pause menu. But here's where you can give it something else. I want a pause menu config, and now it's going to say fine. Define for me that pause menu config object, and this maybe looks a little esoteric. Um, but we're giving, we're making a new pause menu config to throw in, and this is what um, one of the features of Autofac that I use is you can at any time with Autofac say, hey, you know, I want you to to get me one of these these things and, and do dep your dependency injection thing. But by the way, if it asks for an object of type whatever, I've got one for you. Don't do the normal dependency injection thing that you would do. I'm going to provide to you right here the, the object that I, I want you to fill in. So like you could in theory, although it'd be a horrible mistake and there are ways I could prevent this, you could say, hey look, I'm gonna give you my own keyboard manager. I'm, I'm gonna make my own keyboard manager. Let's suppose you had the power to do that um, and it made any sense. And then that would get passed in and override this keyboard manager and you wouldn't get the usual one. You could do that and you shouldn't do it. And there are ways I could prevent it in Play Play Mini, but I haven't yet. Um, so that's kind of just this general feature that Autofac provides. The useful thing to do is to pass in other other things. Like I, I have this other stuff that I want to pass into to this game state when it when it starts up. So and that's what does it. And this should work. I think we've successfully written our pause menu. I don't know if like the text is gonna all look right or if we've made the window wide enough or tall enough or too wide or whatever. I'm gonna press escape, really quit, press Q to quit or any other key to not do that, right? So our window's not tall enough. Um, so there you go, I pressed enter. That's interesting. So if I press escape, <laughs> it probably, I think it's coming back here and then seeing that you pressed escape so quick that it, uh, there I pressed Q, that it just opens up the pause menu again. So that's not ideal, but, um, and, and we can, here, we can fix that. We should say, uh, pressed key. There we go. That would do it. And while we're changing anything, let's go back to the pause menu and we'll make this window a little wider. Let's do like 150 pixels or something. And see how that because that was much, I, probably that's honestly too narrow too. I wish it would open on the right monitor. All right, really quit. Press Q to quit or any other key to not quit. I can press escape and now it works because I'm checking for actual presses, not it's held down at all. Um, so there you go. And again, yeah, we've got this dimmed background. That's how you use a, a previous state. And you could layer that as much as you want, right? I could have the pause menu open up, you know, it's like, or press S to save your progress before you quit. And then we open a save dialogue and then it's drawing the previous state, which in this case would be the, are you sure dialogue and then the are you sure dialogue is drawing its previous states so it'll all stack nicely um, if, if you even have nested uh, game states. Uh, so I don't know, there we go. That's some of the features of Play Play Mini. We've made a ridiculous game. Um, I should make sure if you hold down shift you move faster, but why would you not move faster? Precision, maybe maybe you go real fast, you hold shift to not move fast if you wanna crawl. Whatever, anyway, Play Play Mini, um, it's on, GitHub and NuGet, and if you want to make things better because any of the limitations uh, I mentioned to you sound horrible, you can make pull requests. I'll look at them. Um, one person has already done so. Uh, so there you go. I don't know. That's it. Uh, I'm done for now. Thank you for watching. Um, I hope this is interesting. I hope it helps you make some cool little games. If you do make a game, I'd love to know. I honestly would. I think that'd be fantastic. I would love to know if someone made a game using this thing. That'd be so cool. It's got like tons of downloads. I don't know who's using it. I mean, not, you know, not like thousands, but like, I think there's a couple hundred downloads of Play Play Mini. So someone's downloaded it, whether that's bots or what, I don't know. Um, but so yeah, let me know if you use it. That'd be really cool. I, I, I think that'd be rad. Um, and yeah, that's it. Thanks again. Goodbye.